This is a summary of the turnover ratios. We start with the asset side. We have the total asset turnover ratio, which is the sales divided by assets. Then we check the turnover ratios of asset items. We have the fixed asset turnover ratio, which is sales divided by net fixed assets. Then we have the receivables turnover ratio, which is the sales divided by the accounts receivable. And we have the inventory turnover ratio, which is the cost of goods sold divided by inventory. Then we check the turnover ratios of the liability items. We have the payables turnover ratio, which is the cost of goods sold divided by the accounts payable. We could convert the turnover ratios of the receivables turnover, inventory turnover and payable turnover into days. The receivable turnover ratio could be expressed as Days sales outstanding ratio, which is 365 divided by the receivables turnover ratio. The inventory turnover ratio could be expressed as the days inventory outstanding ratio, which is 365 divided by the inventory turnover. And we have the payables turnover ratio, which could be expressed as the days payable outstanding ratio, which is 365 divided by payables turnover. We have the days sales outstanding plus the day's inventory outstanding minus the day's payable outstanding which will give us the cash conversion cycle. Finally we have the networking capital turnover ratio which is the sales divided by the networking capital. For asset items it is better to have a high turnover or shorter days. Liabilities are the opposite of assets when we choose the best turnover and the number of days. For liability items, it is better to have low turnover or longer days. It is better to have a higher total asset turnover ratio, fixed asset turnover ratio, a receivables turnover ratio, and it is better to have a shorter day sales outstanding ratio. Again, it is also better to have a higher inventory turnover ratio. It is better to have a shorter days inventory outstanding ratio. Uh, it's better to have a payables turnover ratio that is lower. It is better to have a day's payable outstanding that is longer. It is better to have a shorter cash conversion cycle. And it is better to have a higher networking capital turnover ratio. So let's have an example of how to express the relationship among the different ratios. In order to increase the total asset turnover ratio, we should first increase the receivables turnover ratio increase the inventory turnover ratio, decrease the payables turnover ratio, and decrease the cash conversion cycle. We can include all the ratios, but I just wanted to give you a quick example.